Well, um, thank you everyone for, uh, for, for having me and coming to my talk. Um, this is on, oh. all right, so we're talking about uh, solving the Rubik's Cube with, uh, with group theory, which is a, a, branch, of, uh, a branch of math. Um, so just a quick introduction. Um, my name's Stuart Stewart. I'm from New York, New York. <coughs> uh, as of recently, uh, you can just call me T-squared. I'm a bit of a math geek. As of recently, I've, uh, I've joined um, Adam and Noel at uh, Inner Product as a consultant. Um, and, you know, that's my Twitter handle there, so, so that's me. And actually, I, uh, um, my, my very first talk was here at Philly, um, any Scala three years ago, my very first tech talk. And uh, at the time, I had spoken about using relational programming and using that to solve um, logic puzzles. So now I'm back again, this time we're just using group theory and using that to solve um, what we call uh, twisty puzzles. All these kind of Rubik's cubes, and you can see some of them I've spread out on the tables. Uh, feel free to play, um, you know, play with any of those. Uh, I, I, I don't mind at all, and if they break, it's, it's fine. You can just say uh, you're disassembling it to see the mecha mechanism or whatever. <coughs> um, great, yeah, so I um, love puzzles. I've always been, you know, that's probably like the best way to uh, stop me from working, just put a puzzle on my desk. All right, so we'll take a, a quick survey. So who here has, uh, has solved a Rubik's Cube before? Okay, great, yeah, that's maybe like a 25%, so we have a good sampling of people who've, uh, who've done that. Um, who here brought their own twisty puzzle? All right, that's the guy. <laughs> um, oh, yes, sure. Okay, great. Um, so about math, who here has taken an abstract algebra course? Okay, about the same uh, fraction. Nice, nice. So um, maybe uh, some of the crowd's familiar with group theory. And um, just an FP. So who's used like the the group monoid classes um, for like non-trivial stuff? Okay, and that's also about the the same fraction. <clears throat> um, great. So let's go into this. Uh, now, in my, in my uh, description here, in my clickbait, I said, um, in five minutes, I'll teach you everything you need to solve the Rubik's Cube. So we'll, we'll, we'll start with that. So here's all you, um, all you really need to know. So I'm going to bring up, um, so here I have a, uh, a Bluetooth-enabled cube. So I have one in my hand, but for demonstration, it's connected to the computer here. This is using a... Chrome Web Bluetooth and someone else's um, app. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool. Like, so this this toy just came out um, a few months ago, right? So, so it's like kind of a, a closed source thing. There's no like firmware or anything for it, and um, and Chrome Web Bluetooth is, is is still in the experimental stage. So you have to enable the specific flag when you're gonna when you're gonna run it. <clears throat> uh, so it's 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 amazing that already you can uh, you can. Uh, put up a demo like this. So, um, uh, to solve the Rubik's Cube, all you really need is uh, commutators. So, what's a commutator? Um, well, here, so we have an A, uh, this is just my notation. I'm going to say A prime for like um, A inverse. So, a commutator is ca an expression of the form A, B, A inverse, B inverse. So, maybe plus one, plus two, minus one, minus two. It can be uh, the same thing with uh, multiplication and div uh, dividing, as long as you're doing the inverse operation. Um, and I'll, I'll show you what that is. So here, um, let's say you want to invent your own algorithms to uh, solve a, a Rubik's Cube. So you might play around for a bit, and you might, um, you might find a, let's say I have this front corner here, this, uh, this white, green, red. Um, and I'm trying to rotate it. Um, so you might come up with something, but now we've messed up a, a significant portion of the cube. So you can see here in, in the back, we've, uh, we've also had some sort of side effect there, right? Um, so we want to fix that side effect, um, and what we could do is just do... Oh. Uh -oh. Um, 
Okay, you know what? Here, I, we get to uh, show how to solve the Rubik's Cube um, quickly. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so here we've, we've, um, we've rotated that, oh, uh, that's not the corner we want on screen. Um, okay, so here I'm, I'm gonna rotate this, uh, this corner again. And uh, again, I was saying uh, you could fix it, you could fix the back, but then you'd also rotate this corner here. So what you could do is you could, um, after you rotate that front quarter, so that red, green, white, it's in the same position, but it's rotated, right? Now you could do something like uh, change this top layer here, right? So I could uh, rotate that. So now the red, green is in that back corner, but now we had this uh, white, orange, blue, right? And now we can, uh, we can undo the operation we'd done before. So... Um, and now we've fixed the back, but we've rotated this front corner in the opposite direction. Um, so here, again, just doing that, so I can rotate this clockwise here. And then I can uh, rotate this one counterclockwise. And we have a, uh, we have a solve cube. So that, that's, that's really the only, uh, using that concept, you can solve all of these twisty puzzles I have here on all, all these tables. Um, and, and you can use that for a, a type of, uh, for, for meeting things too. So you can, let's say we swap two pieces. Um, we do uh, some sort of um, uh, cycle here, swap another, and then that, you can see that was a R, B, R prime, B, and then R, P, R. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a deform, a, um, a, B, A inverse, B inverse. Okay, so um, commutators, that's, uh, that's it, but that, that might sound a bit like this, right? How to uh, <laughs> invent a commentator, use a commentator, uh, profit, right? So um, that, that, that's fine if you don't understand it, boom, because we're, we're, we're gonna keep coming back to that, uh, to that idea. We're gonna go uh, deeper dive. But just a note on that. So uh, when, I, when I got my very first cube, uh, the person that sold it to me, they, you know, they gave me that kind of lecture, and you can play with the idea for a few weeks. Um, and you know, after a couple of weeks, I was able to kind of develop my own solution. Um, so it's uh, so let, let, let's start using the idea. So um, okay, group theory is this practical? Maybe, but the, the real point is, is to have uh, is to have fun with the with math, programming, and, and puzzles. Kind of take these three ideas together. So this this talk will have um, three main sections. One's kind of a brief overview of the group theory involved. One's an overview of the puzzle. Another is um, kind of the, the programming involved in the solution. Now uh, I'm going to go over the same ideas over and over again in these three parts. So if you if you don't understand something completely, that's that's fine. Um, um, but that said, I, I, I still very much welcome questions throughout the uh, throughout the presentation, um, and I'll make it. I, 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 I like to have an interactive kind of a talk. Okay, so let's start with um, let's start with group theory. So let's define a group, and um, for for those who've used. Um, um, all of, our, all of our type classes, like a you know, ty a type of cats or scala z, whatever, uh, you could just say, oh, it's a monoid with an inverse, right? Um, there's an identity, there's an inverse, there's a way to combine things. And <clears throat> here, here's, here's, the, here's the page for, uh, for cats, right? There's, there's those three methods. And okay, that might give you an idea of how to use this if you've used a monoid before, but it, it doesn't really tell you so much about uh, the groups, and uh, so there are a few assumptions here. So this this combination operation, it's a, it's associative. It's not necessarily commutative, um, but it's it's complete. So you take a, um, any x and y, you can always combine those two into uh, another. And there's an identity, and and any x can always be uh, inverted. Okay, so let's let's try another definition. Um, so group theory, actually, in the early days, uh, um, 
uh, before it became kind of uh, ab uh, you know abstracted and we and abstracted to the point where it's just like uh, operations with their with their inverses. Um, it was it was about permutation groups. So it was permutation group theory. And it was a study of um, permutations and you know multiplying permutations together and and seeing what other permutations you can get by um, by multiplying these uh, uh, so forth. So um, we have we have that. We had that A up there in the in the, in the type class, but let's let's consider um, a finite group. So, um, a, a small set of elements where you multiply two elements and you get another one of those uh, one of those elements. Well, since there's a, there's an inverse and there's a complete, we have we have that uh, every element is kind of a a, a, bi a bijection from that set. Um, every element can be viewed as a function from that set to the, the same set. Right. So you multiply A by um, a by B, and you might get C, or you might get A itself, or so forth. Um, but importantly, so every every element is also um, a permutation, because in, in a finite group, um, you, you might, uh, let's say you take A, and you multiply by all the elements of the group. You're going to get all the other elements of the group, but since um, all of those have to have an inverse, that arrow has to be invertible, right? So the 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 domain and range is the same size, and what you get is the scrambling of all of the um, elements of the group. So every element of the group is also a um, is also a uh, some sort of a permutation. And, and real quickly, so a, a permutation is just like a, a scrambling of, of elements, right? Um, so even when you have a you know when, when it's just kind of an abstract uh, form of like a multiplies with b. A and B can be um, isomorphic to some permutation. Okay, so there's a definition, but it's, it's better with examples. So let's let's look at some. So the the, the first kind of a easy example that comes up is, um, and this one's used for one I two is just just the integers, right? So the integers have a binary opera uh, operation a plus b. Um, you can invert them with like you know a minus b. It's uh, it's closed. You can get any other um, integer and and, and so forth. Um, but the integers are, are kind of like a, a, a special one in that they're really easy to uh, work with. So the commutator earlier, a, b, a inverse, b inverse, when you do that with the, with the integers, you'll get, um, you'll get zero. Plus one, plus two, minus one, minus two, gets you back to um, zero. And if we look back at this, um, back at the cube, if I did um, r, u, r prime, u prime, then it's, it's not back uh, to where it belongs. So that, that can make um, groups harder to work with because multiplication doesn't work the way um, it normally does in, in the uh, integers, right? You, you can't just divide out um, by all the commutators. Okay. Um, so let, let's look at one of these uh, non-commutative groups. And here's a good um, example is the, uh, the symmetries of a triangle, right? So. Um, these are all the ways you can arrange the points of a triangle, and you can do that by either rotating the triangle around, um, clockwise, counterclockwise, or by reflecting it. And you can see those, those colored dots there. Um, if you were to number those dots, right, you, you'd have, um, and, and just la label them clockwise, you might get 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, uh, 2, 1, 3, and so forth. Um, so so the, the, reflection, the, the symmetries of a triangle are kind of isomorphic to all the scramblings of three elements, uh, which is called the symmetric group on three elements, so S3. Um, all right, and, and well, we'll skip that analogy. Uh, great, so we have, uh, we have some examples, so, so let's talk about some concepts here in group theory. Um, an important one is, is parity. So all these permutations, let me pull up some code. So here's a, a perm. Um, and, uh, okay, so I could take this perm and I can, I can move, uh, move a point. So perm.image of uh, one, you'd get two, right? Two, you get four, um, and, and so forth. From, from three at the end, you would get uh, one. So any, any permutation um, can be broken down into a, a product of, of, uh, of 
disjoint cycles, where, where the multiplication operation here is, is first doing one permutation, one scrambling, and then doing the uh, other scrambling. So, um, oops. So here's, uh, here's an example of, of Here's an example of several random permutations, and, and they're all broken down into their disjoint cycles. So this swaps three, five, and then cycles those elements. Um, and that'll be important for us here, uh, because each of those cycles can also be uh, broken down into, into swaps. So let, let's, take, um, let's take this cycle here. And um, you can see here, we have um, a swap of 0, 2, 0, 6, 0, 1, 0, 5, 0, 7, and so forth. And if you were to swap those pieces uh, in order, first swap 0, 2, and then swap 0, 6, um, then you would get uh, res 8. So let's just uh, reduce it with addition. You'd get the original permutation. OK. Great. So, so every, every one of these permutations can broken, be broken down into swaps. Um, and the number of swaps can be broken down into will always be even or odd. So that's the parity of a permutation. So uh, a, a three cycle here is going to be, um, this is uh, an even permutation. Because that is just the sum of, of, uh, of two swaps. So that could be um, 1, 2, and then 1, 3. You multiply 1, 2, 1, 3, you get 1, 2, 3. And all of our odd cycles will be um, uh, even permutations. So, uh, um, and, and parity is, is, is also a group. So, uh, you know, when you're, when you're multiplying numbers and you get like either even or odd, or, or when you're adding numbers, um, if you add an odd and an odd, you'll get um, another, an even number. Even even gets even, even odd gets odd, and so forth. So all of those, um, well, you just throw away all the other um, information and, and look at just that property. Those properties have a, have a group st uh, structure. And these are all the same group. So uh, the operations on you know true and false, po uh, positive and negative, those are all um, isomorphic to the finite simple group of order two, which is just an identity and an other element. OK. Great. So we're, we're going to go back to these I, I ideas. So um, earlier I, I talked about a commutator. So let's say we have an operation that, that rotates um, to um, these two front corners here. Well, we could also, um, uh, well, let's see. We could also modify that um, let's say we, we didn't want uh, let's say we didn't want to change two layers that, that two corners are on the top layer we want to change a corner on the top layer with one on the bottom layer well what we could do is bring a, a corner from the bottom layer to the top and then now uh, when we do our algorithm that swaps two pieces um, or th th that flips two pieces then it'll flip um, that front left piece and that front uh, right piece instead of flipping you know what would otherwise have been uh, uh, two white pieces there. Uh, so, so that's written as A, B, A inverse. And then again, we have our A, B, A, uh, A prime, B prime. Um, in group theory, it's kind of like a measure of how abelian a group is or like how easy it is to multiply things in a group. Um, you know, how messy things get when you, uh, when you, when you multiply and try to divide again. Um, but Importantly, about this commutator is it's uh, it's an e even permutation because it's an even number of um, of operations. So you have a b a inverse b inverse is going to be even, and when when you take two um, two permutations that have a minimal intersection, then you get kind of one of the, one of the smallest even permutations, which is a three cycle. So showing that real quick here, we can take. Um, um, Okay, so here's a permutation one, two, four, five. Um, we'll call that P, and we'll call R. Um, 
R is 5, 6, 8, 9. So those two permutations intersect at only a single point, and that's 5. So if we were to take P plus, uh, plus R, well, actually, let's take, let's take that first. So P plus R, um, you end up swapping uh, a, a lot more pieces, because now you've, you've intersected these cycles, right? But if we take um, minus P and then minus, uh, minus R, then because they only intersect at that single point, 5, then this, most, of those, uh, most of those operations are happening, like this, um, this one moves to two, that gets inverted with, with uh, two moves to one. So most of the uh, mess cancels away, and you get just a three cycle there, which is a four, five, nine. Okay, great. <clears throat> so that's our, our, that's all we'll need from group theory. Um, any questions so far? Yes. How does the permutation notation work where, um, where they drop care? So, so this permutation notation we have here. Oh, OK. So when, when you're reading this, you're, you're saying um, 5 goes to 6, goes to 8, goes to 9, uh, which goes back to 5. So this is a permutation as a project of these uh, disjoint cycles. And then this is a, a longer cycle, so it's just rotating these things, let's say, like a, on a clock, right? <clears throat> okay, great. So let's talk about the Rubik's Cube a bit. Um, when, when people first see a Rubik's Cube, a lot of, uh, a lot of them have the instinct to let's just uh, peel the stickers off and place them back in the, in the right place. So, so when you could say that the structure of the Rubik's Cube is a, um, is a scrambling of these uh, um, 54 stickers, right? Um, <clears throat> so, I don't know, in, in group theory terms, you could say, well, actually, it, it's almost a scrambling of these 48 stickers, uh, of these 54 stickers, because the center, the center pieces stay still. So no matter what here, no matter what I do with the uh, Rubik's Cube, um, you can't possibly move that center to, a, uh, to another location, um, because all the centers kind of uh, move with it, they're, they're fixed. So you could say that um, it's a scrambling of 48 pieces, uh, a homomorphism into S48 if you're a mathematician. Uh, but it's, it's kind of difficult to see structure there because um, this type here can contain many illegal scrambles. There are lots of things you can't do. You can't, um, uh, you, you can't for example, have a, a corner piece that is, is all, all white on, on all sides of that, of that single piece. So let, let, let's, let's look at this again. So not, uh, it's not a bunch of faces, but rather it's 21 pieces. Um, so this, this is kind of the, like the, the, the better solution. The, the first solution might be to peel off the stickers. The, second, the, the better solution is uh, take a screwdriver and uh, disassemble it. And when you do that, you can get something like this here. So you can see um, um, there are eight corner pieces, 12 edge pieces, and then there's all the center pieces which, can, which combine into one fixed piece that doesn't really, uh, doesn't really move. Okay, so let's, let's look at that a, a bit closer. So we have eight corners, 12 edges, one core. Um, these edge pieces and corner pieces are distinct, right? So you can't put a corner piece in an edge piece's um, uh, precision. You know what, let me just put this here. Yeah, that's better. Okay, <clears throat> so, uh, so you, you can't swap corner with, a, with an edge. These center stickers are stationary. Um, so you can, uh, you, and there's, there's, there's orientation, right? So, so this corner uh, we saw earlier, you can put it back in the same spot, but flipped. You can do something similar with, uh, with the edges. So uh, look at that um, white green edge there. So you can put it back in its spot, but now it's it's been it's it's been flipped, right? So that has uh, that has two orientations, and every corner has three orientations. So if you're if you're counting this, you could say, okay, um, there are eight factorial ways to permute the corners. Uh, there are twelve factorial ways to permute the edges. Uh, 
three to the eighth for the number of um, corner orientations because each of the eight corners can have three orientations and, and ditto for the, so, so uh, if you're trying to count all the possible arrangements of the cube, um, well, here we're still overcounting. So as, as you know, permutations of 48 drastically overcounted, um, here we're still overcounting and, and to understand why we're overcounting, we need to go a bit more into like the, the, the group structure of the, of the cube. Okay, here I already showed that. Um, a bit more on the orientation. So every piece has a, an orientation when it's in its home spot, but let's say that uh, yellow, uh, that, that blue, red, white piece here, right? Um, what orientation does it have? Um, well, what you could do is, is take take a, a certain piece, right? So I could take the white stickers here, and I could say um, when, when the white sticker is up, that's kind of my home orientation. So you could say that this piece here is, corrected or, is oriented correctly, even though it's not in its home position, by comparing, um, by comparing its kind of a home orientation sticker with the, the, the place where the um, normal piece's uh, home orientation would be, right? So if I move this uh, this down, you can see that white piece there. You can say that's kind of a oriented counterclockwise. Um, if I did it this way, I could say it's oriented properly. Um, and and it's 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 arbitrary. Uh, so it doesn't really matter how you do it. But how I'm going to do it here is by saying if if uh, you have a, a bright colored sticker, so white or yellow, if they're facing up or down, then that corner or edges oriented correctly. Okay. So we'll go quickly into the group structure. Um, so this group has generators, which is, which is to say um, a minimal set of operations that can get every, uh, that can reach every scrambled state of, of the cube. So earlier with the, with the um, permutations of triangle, you, you can get to everything by, with just a flip across the axis. Um, a mirror or a, a rotation clockwise, right? So you can even get counterclockwise by first flipping and then and then rotating clockwise uh, twice or something. Um, so with the Rubik's cube, it's it's all these face turns. So you can learn a lot about the group structure by um, by analyzing just a single one of these. So all of these face turns are are identical in structure, and that is that they are a paired four cycle. So a four cycle here is an odd permutation. Um, it's a, it's an it, it's a four cycle of the edges and a four cycle of the corners at, at, at the same time. Uh, so as, as, you're, as you're making a move, so since I've, I've just done an odd permutation of the of four edges, the, the permutation of the whole edge group or the edge subgroup of this, of this cube is, is odd, right? And now if I do another move, it's even, it's odd again, um, and, and so forth. But now the same thing's happening to the corners. So odd, even, odd again. And um, <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I, the important thing to notice there is, is that you can't have an odd permutation of corners and an even permutation of edges. So that, that uh, 12 factorial times 8 factorial has to be divided by 2 because cer certain, um, certain permutations can't be reached, right? Okay, um, so edge, and the orientation of the final piece is fixed. So. Um, this is a little bit harder to explain, but I, I can always explain it to someone later who might be interested. But uh, when you orient one corner in one way, you must orient another corner in, in, in another way. You can't just twist one corner, and you can't just flip one edge. Uh, and I'll just kind of leave that as a, as a rule for now with that uh, proof. Okay, so the group structure. So, so as we've alluded to, there, there are the edges and the corners of the group. So they could be their own puzzle. In fact, they have been made into their own puzzle. So you can buy a puzzle that is essentially just the edge pieces of a cube. If you got a two by two Rubik's cube, um, then it's just eight corner pieces and it's just um, that subgroup of the, of the whole puzzle. Um, but there's, there's all, also the orientation. So the, the orientation of the corners um, forms their own subgroup. Uh, and Ditto for the edge orientation. Um, a note for the, a note here. Uh, the orientation is actually a normal subgroup, which, um, 
without complicating things, it means that uh, taking conjugates and, and multiplying by uh, uh, multiplying or, uh, corner orientations is, is a little bit simpler. Uh, so that, that might influence like the order in which you want to solve all these subgroups. If you're going to solve one subgroup first and then solve the other without trying to um, to screw up past subgroups. Um, and these are some some definitions. I can I can go into why this is a semi-direct product or sub-direct product, but for now you can just understand that this is a um, that these groups kind of multiply nicely to make the, the larger group. Okay, so we've, we've gone over the minimal operations. Let's just go back to this. Uh, so 43 quintillion, that, that's the number of uh, possible scrambles in the Rubik's Cube, right? Um, our, our first calculation here was, uh, was wrong because it overcounted by, by 12. So here's a corrected calculation. So uh, the permutations here, we divide by 2. The corners, we, uh, we take off that last three, and the edges, we take off that last two. And that gives you your 43 quintillion. Okay, great, so that's the, uh, the structure of the Rubik's Cube. <coughs> um, so let's talk about a, uh, a solution. Let's talk about approaches to solutions. Um, so first I'll tell you about uh, Thistleway. This is a this is a computer algorithm for solving the Rubik's Cube, and it's it's kind of a, it's informed by group theory. So this was the solution that brought down um, God's number, which is kind of like the, the minimal numbers to solve any configuration. It brought it down to 52, and and since then, like every proof has been just kind of like elaborating on this kind of same uh, method of of traversing subgroups um, um, until eventually it was small enough that they were able able to brute force it at, um, at Google by sending it to their supercomputer for a week. <coughs> so there, there's, you can solve any position in 20 pieces, but that's not very satisfying um, because there's, there's, no, uh, there's no proof of why that, that is the case, and we just kind of brute forced it. Uh, but how this weight works is, is by um, traversing all these subgroups. So we have this, um, this notation here is just saying that um, we want the group that's generated by all these moves. So instead of generating by normal face turns, we're generating by double turns. So all these uh, half turns. And you'll notice as I'm, as, as I'm doing this, um, that now each of these faces has uh, only two colors, right? The color on the opposite um, and, and the color on, on, the, on the own face. Uh, this one is nice in particular because Everything here is an even permutation, and even permutations are easier to solve using commutators because commutators are only ever even. Um, so parity is solved in there. Um, <clears throat> so we have a more uh, complicated subgroup if we add the U and D quarter turns. So up and down. Um, now it's, it's getting a bit more scrambled. You can see there are four colors now on, on these side faces, but only, still only two colors on, on the top and bottom. Now these, um, uh, okay, so, so the important thing about this subgroup is that it preserves that corner orientation. So you can see all the corners still face up. Um, if we add in quarter turns on, on the sides, then we, we lose the, the uh, corner orientation, but now we we're, we're still preserving edge orientation, which is to say you couldn't, um, you couldn't put an edge back into its spot flipped using just these moves. Um, and that's the case because in order to do that, you need to have three adjacent uh, uh, face turns. So say, uh, where's our green-white? Okay, so our green-white here. If we want to put that back into its position, we could do this and then break into that final subgroup <coughs> um, to get uh, a, a flip position. So that final subgroup is, is now just like a, any scrambling of, of, the, of the Rubik's Cube. Um, and this was done with like uh, huge tables of, uh, of uh, like uh, brute force algorithms. <coughs> um, and and that, that's fine for computers, but for, for humans, this is not really an approach that you can understand and, and use on your own. So what humans tend to use is kind of this, uh, this layer by layer approach where, let's say, um, okay, I might, I, might, I might take my, um, cube and start 
solving from the bottom. So, so this yellow layer I'll, I'll work on. Um, uh, okay, so I, I would start by, by doing um, some, some sort of cross here. So these bottom edge pieces are, are solved, right? And then from here, I, I go into solving um, pairs of, of uh, corner and edge pieces. So let's say blue, red, yellow. Uh, we, we put, oh, uh, so we, we put that blue, red, yellow kind of edge corner pair together. And now if we put it into its little slot here between the blue and red centers, we have this, this larger block that's solved, right? So we do each of those uh, in succession. Um, Um, all right, um, so now the whole first two layers is solved. And then from here, people will um, typically solve the orientation first, and then they'll permute the pieces on, the, on that last layer. Um, and that, that's, that, that's great for humans because uh, you, can, you can do it very, pretty quickly. The world record holders can do it in um, in nearly five seconds uh, averaging, uh, and I, uh, myself, I can do that in, in about 20 seconds on average. Um, but it's not great for computers, because a, a lot of the moves you're doing there is, is contextual, right? You, you have to stop and look for pieces, you have, you're, you're making all these different kind of shapes, and, and the model is just not very clean. Um, so another commonly used method is, is to uh, use, uh, to use uh, blindfolded, uh, well, another common event is blindfolded solving. So you know, people will memorize the cube, close their eyes, and then solve the whole thing. And what they do there is they actually memorize all the cycles in the cube. Um, and, and then they, they go from the cycles into, uh, um, well, and when they close their eyes, they, so, so rather than memorizing the, all the sticker colors, they memorize the cycles. And when they close their eyes, they'll kind of um, uh, look into, uh, just execute each of those cycles one at, one at a time. Um, so th that makes heavy use of commutators, uh, and I, I won't demo that right now, sorry about that. But we'll do a kind of a, a we can use a kind of a variation of that to, to uh, solve the Rubik's Cube. So here I'll, I'll go into kind of the, uh, the final solution. Um, so I'm, I'm using Cat Spire, uh, which you might be familiar with, and then this is ALA SC, which is Scala permuted, and that is um, it's it's this neat little computational group theory library in Scala, um, and and this is great because while you know while Spire and Cats might have a, a model of a group, uh, it, it doesn't really help you do anything with with these uh, finite groups. So. So this has a, um, a model of groups that, that allows you to take you know, subgroups of groups and, and compare groups with other groups. And there's all this other analysis. Um, but what I'm using it for is, is just the permutation and the, and the cycle types, which you've seen me um, use in the REPL. And then there's kind of this uh, rigging here, this Bluetooth cubing. OK, so let, let's go into some of this code. Um, Okay, so my model here, I have a, I have a cube state, um, which is a, a pair of the corner state with, with, the, with the edges. And um, here's my, my group definition here. So empty is just kind of the, the identity state. Um, to take the inverse of a, of a state, I, I just take the uh, inverse of the corners and the inverse of the edges. And similarly, if I, can, if I want to combine two states, I can combine the corners um, with, the, with the edges. And I can do that because, because this is kind of like the subdirect product of the corner and edge pieces. Um, so here I define kind of our, our generators, our, all of our face turns, in, in terms of this cube state. Um, before we do that, let's go into the corners. OK, so corners here is similar. So the corners is a. Um, it's a pair of, of a permutation and uh, an orientation. Um, and my orientation here is just represented by a vector of ints. And these ints are just kind of, um, you can ignore, I, I put a type on it, but it's really just the integers mod three, right? So one plus two is three, which is really just zero again. It's like a, the clock arithmetic. 
Um, so uh, the, the group definition here is similar. Um, to combine two corner states, you just combine the permutations. And since this is a, a semi-direct product, the, the combining the orientations is a little bit more complicated. You have to first permute it by the um, permutation and then do the regular um, group addition. And similarly with the inverse here, you first permute it to do uh, and then follow up with the inverse. Okay, great. Um, now I have I have here a a model also of of, uh, of the algorithms you can execute. Um, I'll run briefly because we're running low on time here. Uh, so we, we have all, all of our face turns you saw up above there. There's a, um, but there's also a way to combine. So here you combine two algorithms. Um, here there's a, a, a conjugate, and you compute the state there with A, B, A inverse, and then here commutator A, B, A inverse, B inverse. Um, and well, there are other details there, but that doesn't matter so much for the demo here. Okay. So here, um, okay, I'm, I'm going to run into this really quickly. So what, what we'd want to do here is, is generate all, of, all the, uh, for, for a certain subgroup, let's say um, we want to solve all, all the corners of a, of a, of a cube. Well, we can, uh, we, we can start with this algorithm here. So we, we have this uh, simple commutator, um, which, uh, which looks like, like this. So, um, hmm. okay, here we are. Um, so here I've swapped those two front uh, corner pieces, right, uh, along the vertical axis. And I can have a, a conjugate here, and I do my swap, and then I undo my um, conjugate, and now we have a, a three cycle. So we can kind of um, iterate on, on that basic idea to get uh, to, to generate more of these uh, of these three cycles. So let's um, let, let's take that, uh, and what I'm actually going to do is go into my Git history, and I'm going to nix that. Um, great. So, so here, here we're cheating. So we've taken that uh, we've taken that commutator and we've we've done kind of um, little variations of it to get um, many many more um, many more uh, commutators. So I I can just print that off, but. Here I've just changed little parts of it to get the, all, all the mirrors for z, y, and x-axis. Um, Great, so here we have all our algorithms. So we can turn that into a, a lookup table. And here putting it together, we have a, uh, we have a, I've taken some scrambles here that, that will scramble only the corners. Um, and for each of those, um, each of the scrambles, you can, you can take the, you can take the corner permutation. Um, and then we can do a, a cycle decomposition uh, into, into three cycles. Um, and, and then use use that cycle decomposition to look up commutators for each of those cases. So if we if we uh, print that, great. Here, so for each of these scrambles now, um, here here's the corner state, um, which it's permuted all all of these, and it's the the orientation. Um, but uh, it's it's just a few cycles to solve it. So here, um, in particular, we have one that's. Uh, that looks small, so let, let's uh, let, let's try to solve that. Uh, 
Okay, so we're going to take that. Um, we're going to skip the orientation part, but let's let's take that scramble. So we have. Um, Okay. Um, great. So we can look at this one here. Let's just quickly do that scramble. So we have um, R D prime F two U prime R two U B two D prime F two D L two F two L two B U F two U prime B D R. Um, that'll be our corner state. So first, we'll, let's just I'm just going to solve the uh, orientation using commutators. Um, What's important here is, is that I'm, I'm not changing any of the permutation, so I'll be able to use those algs that were generated. Um, oh, which one did I do? I think I, I, I think I did this scramble. So now I have to cycle one, one, five, two. One goes to five goes to two. Um, Actually, yeah, time's up. So maybe, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll show you the, the, the demo later. Um, but yeah, please uh, come to me for questions. I'll, I'll probably try to do an unsession with all these other puzzles here if we want to just do some math over it, and I can do more uh, demos then. But uh, thank you very much for coming to my talk. And